rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. watching a wonderful student sing, it made me realize that they probably had no idea two years ago that because of COVID, they would be our uh, voices um, for two years in running. Um, so we are looking forward to uh, a, a new presentation once we can get back to uh, more normal um, singing and all those other wonderful things our students do. But with that being said, um, also uh, the way we trans transferred into a, a um, what we had to do this year, um, but we tried to make the best of it thanks to Ms. Miller and some um, other individuals. Uh, we are doing our honors ceremony virtually. So Ms. Williams, I ask you to please get that video ready. Good evening, I'm Jessica Keegan, filling in as interim principal of school number two for Erin Marone, who's out on leave. It is my pleasure to announce our very first honoree of the night. Maria Tapas of school number two has been selected as NASA County finalist in the PTA Reflections Competition. Entrants to the competition are asked to consider a theme in crafting their entries. For 2021, the theme was I matter because. Maria won an award of excellence in the primary division for her musical composition. Congratulations to Maria and her teacher, Trisha Walsh. Good evening, I'm Tara Nauer, the Director of Mathematics K-12. Allison Elizabeth of Oceanside High School is one of four recipients of the Dr. Jean Pill Lee Scholarship from the Long Island Mathematics Conference Board. Scholarship recipients are selected from among residents of Queens, Brooklyn, Nassau, and Suffolk counties, are of African American, Native American, or non-European Hispanic American descent, and plan to major in mathematics at an accredited college or university of their choice. Students wrote personal essays as part of their application. In her essay, Allison wrote of her love of mathematics and cited her teacher, Yves Jean-Pierre, as her inspiration. Please join me in congratulating them both. Good evening, I'm Dr. Matt Christensen, Director of Science, K-12. It is my pleasure to recognize the work of Miranda Leitstein, a student in our college research program. Miranda spent two summers at the University of Pennsylvania, in person and later virtually, working with top scientists in the field doing research on the gut bacteria of dairy cows. Miranda has since written two papers detailing her research, and now both of her papers have been published in peer-reviewed scientific journals. It is extremely rare for a high school student to be published in a professional journal at all, let alone twice, 
and it is a real testament to Miranda, as well as her teacher, Heather Hall. Congratulations to the two of them. Good evening. I'm Kevin Carbonetti, Associate Principal at Oceanside High School and Director of School Counseling. It's my great honor to announce that three OHS students, Samantha Civil, Matthew Friedman, and Rachel Weissman, have been named finalists in the National Merit Scholarship Competition. Approximately 1.5 million students nationwide participate in the competition by way of their PSAT scores. Only about 1% of them reach the level of finalists. Congratulations to these students and to their counselors, Renee Lockridge, Carla Stilwell, and Lisa Fazio. Good evening. I'm Mitch Pickman, Director of Social Studies. I'm proud to announce that our first recognition of the evening is for the members of the World Interest Club, which competes in Model United Nations simulations under the advisement of teachers Danielle Block and Gavin Kalner. Students from the club attended virtually two Model United Nations conferences so far this year, one at Harvard University and the other at Brown University. At these conferences, students assume the roles of world leaders to discuss complex issues, at the heart of which is how nations balance their own interests with the collective quest for international peace, security, economic, and social progress. Our students took home a number of awards at both of these conferences. The following students were recipients of awards at Harvard University. In the category of Best Delegate, Harvard, Max Coppola. Outstanding Delegates at Harvard, Leora Romundi, Rachel Weissman, and Katrina Tronco. In the area of honorable mention at Harvard, Melina Haidt, and the Diplomatic Commendation at Harvard, Christian Hidriata, Sean Daly, Anup Krishnadas, Liam Cole, Dennis Kleiner, and Mika Vine. At Brown University, in the category of Best Delegate, recipients were Leora Romundi, Thomas L. Dahal, Max Coppola, Luke Stranisi, Carolyn Lajara. In Brown, Outstanding Delegates, Sean Daly, Mika Vine. An honorable mention at Brown, Katrina Traco. Congratulations to all of their students and their advisors. In the area of business, DECA is a co-curricular club for students who are interested in business and marketing. Recently, our DECA students participated in the State Career Conference and achieved outstanding success. Advancing directly to the International Career Development Conference, Stephen Height, who won first place in the Stock Market Games North Atlantic Region. Third place and advancing to the International Career DECA Conference, Jenna Udaro, Cassidy Riker, and Samantha Weintraub. And in fourth place, and advancing to the International Career Development Conference, Victoria Freitas. And finalist, Alexa Helder. In addition, the following students received the recognition of overall finest finalists at DECA. Amanda Dadana, Mackenzie Fager, Amanda Sheriff, Evan Spanier, Alyssa Strandberg, Andrew Fishman, Adam Hershow, Slater Ornar, Ashley Capitelli, Kennedy Ramos, Kiera Dannon, Isabel Weintraub, Sydney Tavroff, Andrew Zinzi, Sydney Fuchs, Alexa Newman, Sloan Brody, Jacob Raffin, Jake Weisman, Kirsten Elbez, Gabriela Rozuko, Rebecca Weisman, and Emma Winton. Congratulations to all of our DECA students and their teachers. Michelle Velasco, and Erica Bizelowitz. Good evening. My name is Robert Grace, Director of Fine and Performing Arts at the Oceanside School District, and tonight it's my pleasure to announce all of the honorees in the area of art and music. The following student's beautiful artwork was recently selected for exhibition at this year's Art Supervisors Association Virtual All-County Art Exhibit. Please join me in congratulating the following artists. They are from school number two, Michael Molini, Ethan Tolentino, Sophia Cano. From school number three, Ariana Shannon, Blake Perucci, Jackson Lambert, Michael Parker, Alexandra Nathana, Sophia Hershkowitz, and Hannah Weinecker. From school number four, Lial Lamola, Gabriella Johnson, and Ella Murray. From school number five, Andrea Palomino, Nicholas Balugas and Julia Ballet. From school number eight, Willow Goldsmith, Jolie Frischer, Lily Chiavallo, Roby Lucas, and Elizabeth Geiger. From school number nine, 
Gabriella Vacchio, Nadia Altisi, Danny Mala, and Helen Henderson. From the Oceanside Middle School, Alayda Benedict, Giuliana Curatolo, Alana Decker, Sienna Farsky, Samantha Friedman, Bella Cincinnelli, Jacob Stern, and Angelina Riccaton. From Oceanside High School, Castleton, Olivia Nicholson and Lorraine Bacard. And finally, from Oceanside High School, Rachel Lockman, Ava Marino, Daniela Olilla, Joseph Almodovar, Aaron Morrow, Kaylin Mahaffey, Jill Bryan, Jordana Halper, Scott Levine, Olivia Ikes, Amanda Giuseppe, Alexander Santoro, Bridget Mahoney, Emma Romano, Matthew Malkowitz, and Tabitha Dumoro. And their art teachers are Marla Petty, Allison Milkins, Jacqueline Shiner, Kira Sinberg, Jean Marie Toy, Christina Di Figueroa, Kristen DeDio, Kimberly Lindenoff, Denise Nicholas, Andrea Smith, Francine Rosano, Jennifer Bonilla, Danielle Cascarelli, Maria Alessanso, Kristen Gemino, Catherine Thiel, Nancy Nigro, and Rachel Cohen. Please help me recognize the remarkable achievements of our high school art students who were recently selected as winners in the prestigious Scholastic Art and Writing Awards competition. They are Gold Key winner Zoe Grimmer from Oceanside High School. Honorable mentions Oceanside High School, Alex Benowitz, Tabitha DeMauro, Alexandria Tansi, and from Oceanside High School, Castleton, Michael Weinstein. And their art teachers are Nancy Nigro and Kristen Jamino. The following Oceanside High School art students were selected as exhibitors for the Go 8 AP and IB art exhibit sponsored by the Art League of Long Island. And they include Alex Benowitz, Kaylin Mahaffey, and Jack Marciotti. In addition, Oceanside art student Emma Romano received the distinction of being only one of eight winners chosen as an Award of Excellence recipient for this special event. Their dedicated art teachers are Nancy Nigro and Danielle Cascarelli. Our final honorees in Fine Performing Arts were individuals that had been selected in the area of performing music. More specifically, these outstanding musicians were each chosen as a performer for one of the prestigious All Eastern Honors Groups. And these Oceanside High School students are Sophie Stackroth, who was selected for the All Eastern Virtual Trouble Chorus. Samantha Santiago, also selected for the All Eastern Virtual Treble Chorus. And finally, Samantha Sybil, who was selected for the All Eastern Virtual Symphonic Band. Congratulations to these hardworking and dedicated musicians and their fabulous music teachers, Mr. George Grossman and Mrs. Lynn Garcia. And finally, congratulations to all of our wonderful winners in the area of music and art. Congratulations to all the recipients. Okay, moving on, I need approval for the minutes. March 24, 2021. Make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? I need a motion to approve the minutes from April 14th special board meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Financial reports. Need a motion to file for order to review. Aye. I move A, B, and C for file portage. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. Items for information. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Mullen. I am so excited for this next presentation. Um, I say this was a long time in coming, um, but I say, I don't know, maybe 10, 20, 15, 40 years. I'm not exactly sure. It's a long, long, long time. 
So without further ado, I am going to turn the microphone over to Mr. Brace, who will very, I think, proudly introduce um, our new marching band uniforms. Mr. Brace, please. This line, terrific. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to be really brief. Uh, I'm really happy to be there. Uh, happy to be here tonight. This is the end of a long, 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 and I don't know if I mentioned long <laughs> journey. <laughs> The process of buying Martian Man uniforms, just so you know, are something where you wouldn't go into uh, a store and just take it right off the rack. When you go to do a Martian Man uniform, the process takes around two years, maybe a little bit longer. So very briefly, it takes time sitting with a Marching Man director, coming up with a theme about what you'd like that uniform to look like. You're picking a style, you're picking a, something that hopefully is going to be unique, and something that's really going to help to represent our community, give it that little special touch. So Mr. Vetter was wonderful, the staff was wonderful, we talked, we moved through these pieces, our students were marvelous. We put together a committee, we made sure those student representatives came in, they looked at uniforms, both color guard and what you're about to see tonight. They helped us come up with ideas, things that they'd like to see. We kept it on the QT, we showed our offices what it was going to look like, and then we made whatever adjustments had to be made. And then after that finishes, you must bid it out to companies where they have to make samples. So a key part of that is after it's out, you have to get those back and, and you want to make sure the sample looks like what you had designed. And sometimes you can go to three companies and get a very different look and the colors or the little different nuances that you find about what you're really looking for. We're really happy that what you're about to see in the uniforms that we actually had envisioned, everything came out just the way we wanted to. Uh, so we are absolutely thrilled with that. We're proud of our students for the input that they had, and I think they are going to do you proud when they finally wear these uniforms in about seven years when, when everything <laughs> clears, and it's going to be a, something to perform for. So we are, we are really looking forward to that. And on behalf of myself, we thank the Board of Education for the commitment of letting us budget for those uniforms. A while back ago, we have started that process. And certainly our central administration, who whenever we had uh, facsimiles, we would go to them and make sure that we were all on target so there'd be no surprises. So I'm really pleased right now to introduce two of our students who are proud to come out tonight. Uh, and then they're going to make a little presentation uh, with one of our former retired uniforms. So I'm going to ask Ben. The uniforms you're about to see are two different ones. The uniform to your right, we asked the female and the male to come tonight. The reason they are different is this is the uniform you'll tend to see with our regular marches, if you'd like to turn to the crowd. Uh, this is the uniform that our regular marches would be wearing during the season. The uniform you don't see tonight is our color guard uniform. Those are brand new. Unfortunately, in the middle of the pandemic, the company we ordered from went out of business. So we started back up again, and those uniforms are ordered, and they should be in shortly. Uh, uh, so we are very proud to make sure those girls are outfitted in new uniforms. This one's supposed to look different. This is our drum major uniform. So we, we have several of these for just the special people who do our conducting and lead our group. So that's why they look a little distinguished and a little bit different. So at this point, Ben, I know there's something you'd like to say, and then we'll give you a little presentation. Hello, I'm Benjamin Froeckler. On behalf of Mr. Vetter and the entire OHS Sour Marching Band, we would like to thank you, the Board of Education, for the beautiful new uniforms that we are wearing right now. And accept this retired uniform <laughs> as a token of our appreciation. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. In fairness to our two students in the four years, and I did want to tell you, we were not cleaning out our closet. <laughs> when we originally bought the uniforms, one of the requests that came from the Board of Education said, when you are finished, it would be our honor if you give us a uniform. And I right away told Dr. Harrington, I said, I'll give you 80 of them. <laughs> so once again, I can't tell you, from the bottom of my heart, we know it's a major commitment to the community who funds this. We hope we always do you proud, whether we're doing a competition, whether we're doing a football game, or we're doing a parade, or just being community ambassadors. The students really appreciate what you've done for them. Uh, and these uniforms normally are expected to last, like our last ones did, normally about 25 years. Uh, and our last ones, while that looks good, they went the distance. So we thank you again. Can they walk around, Mr. Brace? Let them you walk around. Why don't you go through that way? Yes. Now we didn't get out of the look. Excuse me, before they start walking around, you just know, turn to the camera so the yeah. people at home can see how beautiful they are. They're absolutely stunning. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you again. Thank you. 
Thank you. And by the way, this is Mr. Ray, our assistant band director. So Mr. Ray, thank you for coming out tonight. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, now we're moving on. Mr. Coakley, um, update on safety and security, and Dr. Harrington. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Mulhern. So, in a few minutes, um, Mr. Coakley and Mr. Byrne will um, will give you an update. Um, I just want to make uh, just a general statement that, despite the fact that our focus this year obviously was on health and safety, COVID related, we did not give up on our commitment to the community that safety and security would still remain a focus of ours. So uh, with that, I will turn the microphone over to Mr. Coleman. Thank you, Dr. Harrington. Uh, tonight I have the pleasure of just providing a brief update of where we are with respect to safety and security, alongside uh, Mr. Rob Byrne, who is our Director of Security from the Altaris Consulting Group. Uh, most of us have been proud to partner with Altaris for over two years now. Part of the superintendent's task force included the safety and well-being of all building occupants. That security subcommittee recommended to make important school adjustments based on the state's school reopening guidance. Our buildings had increased signage, directional arrows, socially distanced decals in and around the building, and arrival and dismissal protocols were slightly modified to minimize congestion. Prior to the first day of school, trainings and professional development opportunities were offered to security staff due to the adjusted security operating procedures to ensure all of our school buildings were secure and students and staff were safe. We kept our scheduled quarterly district-wide safety team committees to continually assess the effectiveness of the new protocols and how school reopening was going. I want to send a big thanks to our safety team committee who was comprised of various stakeholders including teachers from all buildings, administrators, parents, security staff, board members, and uh, last but certainly not least, two student representatives. In our 2021 budget, we proposed phase two of our district-wide security improvements. Through our partnership with Interlogic Solutions and the Altaris Consulting Group, we are happy to now report that all phase two proposals have now been completed. Our VMS 3.0 conversion now gives key stakeholders within the district the ability to remotely access cameras in the event of an emergency. It also allows us to modernize our system with advanced, state-of-the-art, high-resolution cameras. The Aurora key scan upgrade is an enhancement to our ID badge system. We now have more accountability to accurately pinpoint and timestamp when a building is accessed by an employee. Each school is now equipped with a dedicated lockdown server. This greatly enhances the efficiency of our lockdown system in the event of a true emergency. We've also replaced existing, stro existing strobe lights with a higher quality LED strobe to be more visible, especially during daylight hours. Strobe lights are a warning and an indicator of a building initiating its emergency response plan. Thanks to the support of the district-wide safety team committee, building administrators, and their building emergency response teams, also known as BERTs, we now have secured our district-wide phase three proposal for the upcoming school year. We have conducted interior camera effectiveness walkthroughs in each school with the building, with the building principal, Interlogic Solutions, and key district staff members, and now have identified blind spots, redundancy of cameras, and we will be switching to IP-based higher quality interior cameras in all schools. Two-way radio communication remains an important component to district-wide security. The proposal for next year streamlines all schools to the same make and model radio and gives the ability for those schools to communicate real time with one another. Finally, we have taken each school's building emergency response team's input and recommendations to individual school needs and ideas for future proposals to keep us ahead of the time with respect to district-wide security. At this point, I will turn it over to Mr. Rob Byrne, Director of Security from the Altaris Group. Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to uh, quickly touch on our partnerships here in the Northside School District with regards to safety and security. 
We have a strong relationship with all of our first responders, including the Nassau County Fourth Precinct, the Oceanside Fire Department, and the Department of Homeland Security School Task Force. Each agency regularly attends meetings, school drills, and keeps us apprised of real-time information that helps keep our schools safe. At BOCES, we have a coordinator who comes to the district once a week to give us updates on health and safety guidelines, and is also a key member of our district-wide safety team. We comply with all our NICE regulations and mandates, and we submit district-wide safety and building level safety plans annually, which are reviewed and certified by Dr. Harrington prior to submitting to New York State. We have had on-site monthly meetings with Intralogic, which is the company that has provided the district with our security technology. These meetings allow us to review current projects, discuss future projects, and in regards to constant evolving technology as well as discuss any technical issues that may arise over the course of the school year, and of course, to keep us happy as a long-time client. Finally, my company, Altaris Consulting Group, offers training at various points of the school year for monitors, security staff, building administrators, and had recently worked with Central Office on an incident command system through the consultant side of our company. We also assist with putting together the annual district safety plan, the building level safety plans, as well as participating in the superintendent's task force for a school reopening. In regards to myself particularly, I'm in the district full time uh, to oversee any ongoing security projects, provide an additional presence at any large events within the district, such as sporting events, prom, uh, senior class uh, events, if we can get back to those hopefully, uh, board of ed meetings, uh, and anything else that uh, I've been on 24-7 call. Uh, and I'm also here to assist with the, any day-to-day -day issues that arise. We look forward to continuing our partnership with Oceanside Schools and making the learning environment for our students and staff as safe as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Coakley, Mr. Vern. Ms. Mulhern, any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. That was excellent. One second. Okay, um, any members of the board have any questions? This is Deep Russia. Uh, Mr. Byrne, I just wanted to ask you briefly, I know everybody was glued to the TV sets yesterday with that uh, tragedy that was in uh, West Hempstead, and then of course, we saw that there was a lot of school districts that got locked down. Fortunately, thank God we didn't get locked down. Long Beach, because I think there was a prior residence there or something like that, locked out. Could you please, God forbid this happens to us, I know a lot of people in the audience, in a brief stroke, I don't want you to go through everything because I'm on a committee, but people also that are watching online, can you tell them that God forbid that happens here and we gotta go into a lockdown, how that happens quickly? Yes, I was in uh, constant contact with our local fourth precinct and Homeland Security officers who, due to the information we had, told us we were advised us that we did not have to go into a lockout situation yesterday. Um, but if it were needed, if the situation had changed, if the individual would possibly come towards Oceanside, they immediately contact me, and I would start to reach out to the voting administrators, Dr. Harrington, and Mr. Ford. So what I could also add to that, there's a system now in place with Nassau County that I, as a superintendent, get alerts 24-7 if there's anything to be of any concern. They share everything that's happening within Nassau County. And then from there, depending on what they share, is then you reach out to Correct. your local sources to decide, help you decide what to do. Um, the reason I, I, I corrected you is only because there's a huge difference between a lockout and a lockdown, it's really very important. Um, I, you know, again, every district is permitted to make their own decision, but I, and with the help of Mr. Byrne, Mr. Coakley, we were right on it and we were advised that, that, to, uh, that it, it was not necessary at all to go to a lockout. I just, want to thank, I just want to thank you and, and everybody involved, knowing that this district is safe with everything we've been putting in place and that we continue to put in place. And I was extremely satisfied that in case we did have to go into a lockout, a lockdown, that you know we were ready to prepare for it. Yeah, uh, our fourth precinct guys, our, our homeland safety guys are incredible. They, they keep us up to date on everything. And Mr. Colby and myself get those same alerts. It's a text, it's a phone call, and it's an email from Homeland Security of any Police incidents anywhere near school in that mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Byrne. Any other questions from the board? OK. 
Okay, there being no other questions, Dr. Harrington, COVID-19. Okay. Yes, so uh, the, the primary purpose of my conversation tonight has to do with um, our plans for moving up ceremonies and high school graduation. Um, Ms. Williams, if you can get that PowerPoint up, please. Uh, while she's doing that, I'm, I'm really excited to announce that um, you, you probably know that we've had a partnership with South Nassau now a couple of months helping us uh, attempt to get our faculty and staff vaccinated. Um, as of April 24th, they actually are helping us getting our, getting our students vaccinated. They had over 400 slots as of about five o'clock this afternoon, 349 of those slots were already taken from our Oceanside students. Um, there's still 81 slots available, so if you know anyone 16 or older, if they haven't already done so, please take advantage of that. Um, but we are um, extremely excited by that because it will make a difference, not only as we return more of our students back to school full time, but as you'll see in a minute, uh, it will also have a significance relative to some of our requirements for our um, end of year celebrations. So, um, I title this, I just want to take this moment to be clear on this, moving up ceremonies of which, we, of which we have many in our school district, as you well know, but we only have one graduation, and that is our high school graduation. We have one class of 2021, and those are the students that will be graduating uh, this coming year. So as we move on, um, what I will let you know is that in April of 2021, uh, New York State Department of Health did come out with a guidance document. I will have to say, I will say it was one that I found um, most clear compared to so many that have come out um, throughout the, this year. Uh, it was clear, it was, um, it, it outlined a number of different things, but there was also a degree of flexibility, which, um, which I will explain um, as we move forward. But in summary, it's a, a multi 20 some odd page document, but in summary, I want to be clear on a couple of things. So regardless of the location or the scale of the event, there are certain things that are, must happen. We must obtain contact information for, for tracing. We have to conduct health screening questionnaires. We must maintain social distancing of at least six feet. We must mandate mask wearing at all of these events. We also are responsible for controlling the movement of all participants. And at all costs, they continue to prioritize outdoor ceremonies at all times and actually discourage indoor events unless they are absolutely necessary. They are also strongly encouraging that the events are kept short in length. And then depending on the ultimate size of the event, they do have different requirements. But these are um, necessities for every single one of our ceremonies. So now let's talk about elementary moving up. We have made the decision. Our priority, of course, is to have an outdoor ceremony, and that's what we plan to do. We want to do it to, for all of our schools equitably and well. In order to do that, we want to do it on one, at one location. So we are going to hold all of our elementary moving up ceremonies at Schoolhouse Green. We will accurately and, 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 and appropriately make sure that they're well decorated, that the seating is appropriate. We are hiring um, sound people, so the sound is, is really good. Um, we want to do it well, and that is one of the main reasons for this one location. And of course, those that know our Schoolhouse Green, it is really beautifully well maintained, and it will be a beautiful site. These are the dates. All of this will be on the website as of tomorrow. Um, and of course, as we get closer to the date, you'll get more information directly from your principals. But um, as you can see, and, and, and these dates were not picked at random. They were picked, obviously, with, with um, the input of the elementary principals because there are so many things that happen over the course of those last couple of weeks. Please keep in mind that we needed to uh, plan for 10 different ceremonies. So there was a lot of uh, juggling that we had to consider. So for our elementary schools, schools two and eight, two, three, eight, and five will have two ceremonies each. The times are listed there. Those are not solid, solid, but they're as close to solid as you can get. You can plan on that. Uh, schools 90 and schools 4, of course, being our smaller schools, will have one ceremony uh, on Tuesday the 22nd. What we were able to do with the elementary schools, different from the middle and high school, I, I warn you in advance, 
But what we were able to do with the elementary schools, because of their size and because of this one location, as you can see, there are eight events scheduled between the 16th and the 22nd. We have six slots that can be used for rain dates. So um, if we're lucky and we have absolutely no rain, which I'm banking on and lighting candles as we speak, um, but we'll be fine. Um, if we do have a day of inclement weather, we still will be fine with being able to have outdoor uh, the outdoor event. Of course, I don't even want to say it, but if but for some stroke of bad luck, we have a really bad stretch of rain, then we will, then we will have to alter our plans for, for, for the particular schools. With the outdoor events, we can have two attendees per student. The event, all of the events, we plan to have live streamed. Um, we're working on that as well. I know at our high school, we're looking to bring Varsity MG in, who does an outstanding job. Um, and we're still working on our elementary, whether it be what we currently use in FHS, or, or our, somehow we're going to have outstanding live streaming for all of our events, regardless of whether they are indoors or outdoors, they will be live streamed. And then, as I already said, in the unlikely event of the elementary school, if the rain date gets rained out, um, then we need to shift to an indoor event. And the indoor event would be in the school six auditorium. It would have to then be students only. And of course, it would be live streamed. All of those uh, calculations are based on the capacity limitations um, that are part of the requirements. That's for all of our elementary schools. Our plan for our middle school moving up is to also have it an outdoor event and to also avail ourselves of schoolhouse green. The original date was Thursday, June 24th. We're holding to that date. There will be four sessions. Keep in mind, obviously, that the numbers of students at the middle school you know, are um, obviously much larger than any of our individual elementary schools. So again, those are the, those are the times we anticipate. Um, also two attendees per student, also live streamed. Now in the unlikely event that there is inclement weather, we, do, we will have to shift to an indoor event. There is no rain day. There's a couple of reasons for that, including the fact of the requirement I'm going to get to in just a minute. If it does get rained out, the event will have to be held at the OMS auditorium, students only, and also live streamed. Now, Given the size of that event, again, based on the requirements that we were given, given the size of that event, proof of, this is for all participants, faculty, staff, parents, guests, students. For all participants, there has to be a proof of vaccination or testing in order to be ent entered. I'm really excited to announce to the community that I've already arranged with the company that did the testing for us when we thought we were going to have to do testing for all those color zones, we did, we went through all of that and we wound up, they changed the rules on that. But it won't go um, wasted because I can tell you, and the video will still be available, is available on our, on our website, they, uh, this particular testing is very non-invasive. They do a mouth swab. I kind of joke with people that the hardest part of the test, they ask you to you know, identify, think about your favorite food. I thought to myself, that's really hard, I can't do that. It's ice cream pizza, I'm not sure. That was the hardest part of the test. It's non-invasive. Um, I've already arranged for that company, uh, to, for the middle school, to be on site on Monday, June 21st, at the middle school, parents can bring their children in. Kids are not in school, no students are in school on that day. And um, they can avail themselves of that opportunity to be tested. It would be a PCR test, and the, then the results would be back, they assured me, in time for the event on the 24th. Of course, parents are free to take their children to any local available place to get tested if they chose to do that. But um, the fact that we were able to secure that service for our community, um, I hope will be seen as a positive thing. And again, I'm sorry, but we don't have, the only way, I will say this to you, the only way we could avoid testing at all would be if we did events without parents, without guests. So we're choosing that option at this point. Of course, the board gets to weigh in on that decision. I think it's the right decision, especially because I guarantee you, uh, if there's anyone concerned about the testing, that, that it is a non-issue with this particular company. Um, 
Just wait till the end of the presentation, yeah. then we'll ask they, questions. It, it, okay. it basically, it's going to be from I the morning. I might have the same question. But. It, what, so the question was, are there hours? Here's the thing. It'll, it'll start first thing in the morning. It will. We will, at some point, there's certainly logistics that still have to be worked out. At some point, we're going to need to know approximately how many people want to avail themselves of that. Once we know how many people want to avail themselves of that, then we can work with the company. I'm not going to secure them for 10 hours if we only need them for three hours. So it's going to depend on what the need is. It'll start first thing in the morning and it'll go through, through the day. There was a question raised actually from our faculty. It was a great question. Could we or would we consider having evening hours if, if, for, for parents on that day? I, that's fine. I think that makes great sense. I just have to work with the company on that. So that's a, that's a logistic that still has to be worked out. But that was a great question. Okay, and now our one and only high school graduation. So our graduation will be held on Friday, June 25th at 5 p.m. at the Charles R. Mosbach Memorial Field at OHS, um, known by some as our football field, but it's the Char Charles R. Mosbach Memorial Field. Similarly, two attendees per student, the event will be live streamed. Once again, same thing, if there is there's no rain date, if it's in climate weather, we need to shift to two indoor events, five and seven. Um, it'll be in the OHS auditorium, students only, live streamed. Same thing, given the size of the event, proof of the vaccination, proof of vaccination or testing. Now here's where our kids could be vaccinated, and that's really what our hope and our goal is, so they won't even have to go through the testing. We can't mandate that but it's certainly um, advocated, and I think we're doing all we can to try to encourage that. Here's the exciting news about the testing for this uh, group. I have arranged for the same company to do on-site testing um, on a PCR testing on Tuesday the 22nd. That's one option. We also have arranged, you can do PCR testing or rapid testing to be able to be eligible to enter this event. We've also arranged for rapid testing on that Friday. The day of graduation, we can also do rapid testing. What we can also do on that day, if a student chose to come in to have a rapid test, but they also want to go to the prom, where the requirement for the prom is also going to be testing, they can actually have both tests done at that same time. So they can have a rapid test and a PCR test, the PCR test, of course, the results won't come back for graduation, but they'll come back for um, in time for the prom. So they only have to have one appointment in order to handle the testing. So we thought that that was also, also a plus. And here is um, one thing that the community must understand, that given the size of this, it will exceed the recommended number um, that the state is suggesting. They are allowing you to do that, but if you do that, you must submit a plan at least five days in advance. It would be my plan um, um, coming from, um, from me, my, signed by me, to, submitted to the DOH five days in advance. They don't approve plans, but what they tell you is you have to, we have to specify, and we will be able to do six feet distancing. We have the space in, in, the, in the field. We have the two bleachers, we have track seating, and we have the field seating. So our capacity is over 6,000, and it was well calculated scientifically by Mr. Schlote, so I know those numbers are accurate. I have to submit the plan of how we're going to allow the entrance, all the requirements we're going to follow, and they will have that plan. What they have told us is they will also be spot checking the events for which those plans were submitted. So you need to know that we have to be true to all of these requirements, of course across the board, but in particular to the high school one because um, it will be submitted to the DOH. And the last thing I want to say before I answer any questions is there are a couple of things that are just not even going to be on the table for discussion this year. We don't have an option. So we ask the community to please understand, two tickets per student is the maximum. We cannot accommodate split families in any fashion. I will tell you, last year when we finally did our, our graduation, um, and it wound up being a wonderful success, uh, it was it was difficult um, because we had so many 
sadly, but we had so many, many um, really angry people who we ultimately managed to figure it out, those circumstances were different. But at the end of the day, it's not even gonna be a conversation. We won't even take the calls. It's two tickets, we don't have an option. However, the live streaming, we promise you, will be stellar. So quite honestly, in some cases, you'd probably be able to see the ceremony better than you can from one of the top bleacher seats. Um, and just we're hoping that families understand that and for the benefit of their child, they figure it out. Um, another very non-negotiable is that the results of the test are firm. We will not be in a position to say, well, it's a rapid test, so it, you, know, you get a lot of false positives, more false positives. It doesn't matter. A, 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 a positive is a positive is a positive. We will not entertain conversations with people about how they might think that the results of the tests are skewed or, or not accurate. We are hoping for a safe, enjoyable outdoor event, and as you know, we can control many, many things, and there are still some logistics that need to be worked out, um, but we can't control the weather. So, you know, please understand that if it does happen to work out that way, um, we've had, we will have had no option, but it f will not be for lack of trying. At least I hope that's what the community um, will feel. And then again, I do remind everyone, again, that those that are fully vac vaccinated at least 14 days prior to the, of the event, they're not, they're, they won't be required to test, nor, would they, nor are they required to quarantine. I mean, keep in mind for every participant, one of the issues still out there is if you are um, near a confirmed case in your own home, say it has nothing to do with school, you're susceptible to quarantining if you're not vaccinated. So um, that is our plan, Ms. Mulhern. I will entertain any questions. This will be on the website. I recognize fully more detail will have to come, but I think this is pretty clear and um, happy to answer any questions uh, you have at this time. Okay, before I do have two questions. One is, in the high school graduation um, slide, it says um, June 21st at OMS. I think oh, that's supposed I, to mean Tuesday. It does. I'm so sorry. I, I, Tuesday, I, June. So wait, look, I just want to get this out to the outdoor no. audience. Is you, that the high school is Tuesday, the tw June 22nd, or and or Friday the 25th? Correct. When is the high school? Um, it, it, high school is the 22nd. You know what, I apologize. I had sent this to, to Steph. I had changed it on, on my thing and it didn't make it over. It'll be, accurate. It'll be accurate on the website. Uh, understood, I just wanted She's to She's already got it changed on this one. Yeah, we'll have, I, that, I we'll have that corrected on the website and just so everybody's clear at home that the high school, the middle school is the 21st that we're providing the testing and the high school is Tuesday the 22nd or Friday the 25th, so just for that purpose. And my other question to you, is the testing open to the parents that will be getting tickets to the, as participants, or is it just students and I'm sorry, I was reading a text from Ms. Is Ms. the testing open to parents who oh, will yes. be participants? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so it's not only students, but parents will, the parents that will be getting what? the ticket will be able to get yes. tested as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, we open okay. to anybody. Thank you. I do want to just say, you know, Dr. Mitchell was saying there might be a conflict with the SANS, um, what they said versus what the health professional yeah. said. So we'll we'll we're, follow we're working up. Working out the testing, the Friday testing was a problem for Monday. We'll get a result. I think it's just an assumption. Okay, yeah. so we're going to leave that open for now. You're working it out as far as Friday testing for prom for counting for prom. That's still open, and we're but we're, we're yeah. I mean the health the, the, the health professional up. said it's it's got to be 72 hours prior to the event. So if they have it, you know. It, it should it should be so we'll we'll double check with what what they're saying. That's our intent. Our intent is to uh, um, provide an opportunity for students to have one seat and then they get both tests. That's yes. all. Fine. Okay. That, that are not vaccinated. That's that correct. Vaccinated. Right. That are not vaccinated. Okay. Now, with that said, any questions from the board? Can you just clarify that being declared surplus uh, and what's our our cost? Uh, to replace these numerous, I mean, I can't believe how many iPads and Chromebooks are on that list. And we, have, we haven't had Chromebooks for that long that so many should be surplus. So what's, what's their life expectancy? What's our cost? Right, Mrs. Pavito? 
I can't uh, speak specifically to the life expectancy. What I can say to you is that everything that is surplus is equipment that is completely unusable for one reason or another. There is nothing there that hasn't been fully vetted, fully checked to ensure that it is completely unusable or that it can't be resold because we do have mechanisms that allow us to sell back, resell certain components so that we can acquire back that um, profit whenever it's possible. But I'm, I'm just concerned as to why are they becoming why are they getting beaten up to the point that they're useless? Who, what, are they, what are the kids doing? I don't think it's what uh, the kids Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say that at all. You know, but also, also keep in mind that, that I know there was a lot yes, uh, last week, last month, and this month, but we're also finally catching up to our system. Uh, we transferred a lot of the surplus materials. It used to be in every nook and cranny in every single building. You know that we have the new harbor facility that is finally up and running. Actually, just this week, we hired uh, the individual who's going to run that building, who's going to uh, manage our fixed assets. So a question like you just answered, we can answer by, by hitting a button. So a lot of this equipment, Mr. Petoskey, has been in, again, in, 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 in nooks and crannies everywhere. We finally got, got a system where we're beginning to get it together and get out. You will not see a list like this every month, that I can assure you. And I, I won't repeat what Ms. Provito said, but, but I will support what she said because it's act very, very true. We have a, a very detailed system. We're audited by that system. So, um, you know, we've, and we have had Chromebooks for quite some time, and we, we the one-to-one -one initiative for all of our students, you know, but we had them out for teachers, and um, I, again, don't have the exact dates of the, sh of the shelf life, but no, I understood. But we don't, we don't get rid of things. We, can't well, I know they're, they become they're yeah. past their useful life, where they're you know, broken down, they can't be repaired. I know you're not throwing after the stuff. I'm just concerned that we have to pay to replace these items each year. You, you've, got to, you've got to have enough problems, enough projects. Okay, any other questions from the community regarding items we're about to take action on? Okay. I need a motion for item A, real property tax card report. Move it. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Motion for B, item B, Department of Community Activities proposed Move it. tuition. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. We need a motion for item C, approval of high school music scholarship. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. I need a motion for item D, approval to declare equipment Move surplus. Move it. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. I need a motion for item E, resolution to award bid. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. I need a motion for item F, approval. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Need a motion for item G, approval to allow student. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Need a motion for item H, special education placement. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any abstention? Oh, excuse me, any opposition? Any abstention? Motion carries. Item I, professional, personal. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Abs any abstention? Motion carries. Item J, civil service personnel recommendation. Mm -hmm. Second. Second, I need a second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Need a motion for item K, hourly employee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Okay. Opportunity for the superintendent of schools. Just a couple of announcements. Um, we're so excited to welcome a new member to the Oceanside family, and that's Chloe Lynn Marone. Uh, Ms. Marone, principal of school two, had an absolutely adorable little baby girl. Um, so we're so very happy for her. Mommy and baby and big brother and daddy are all doing well. 
Um, also, the board did approve tonight the res rec recommendation for the purpose of retiring for Lori Francone, who, um, those that know um, Ms. Francone, she's an administrative assistant at School 5. Um, she's an incredible um, woman. Uh, she has been the rock at School 5, um, right, Ms. Provito? Yeah. <laughs> um, she it will be sorely missed. Um, but I know we will have opportunity to wish her well as she goes to this next leg of, of, her, of her life. Thank you, Ms. Moment. Thank you, Dr. Hamilton. Opportunity for the Board of Education? Okay, there being none. Opportunity for members of the community on non-agenda items. Okay, in the back over there, Mr. Lyson. Hi, Kyle Lyson. Um, can you right. try to, just could you try to get the, the people at home, to, if you don't mind? I'm sorry. I'm, but it's just because it gives you know the benefit of the people at home. I think the money's out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh anyway, um, graduate, uh, resident, parent, teacher. This has been such a challenging year, as we all know. I wanted to thank you all for everything we've been doing and been able to accomplish so far. And with the news of these graduations, the excitement in, in me is unparalleled. And when I can pull, uh, say this to uh, some of my kids, and when I say my kids, I mean my students, the happiness is going to be unbelievable. So let's hope we really can pull this off. And I just want to thank you. It's just great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawson. Any other members of the community? Uh, Mr. Vitalski. Yes, I just wanted to point out uh, that tomorrow night uh, there will be a virtual uh, presentation by Oceanside Dock and Oceanside Safe. The, uh, the code to join is on the web website, uh, Community Approach to Substance Abuse Prevention with uh, Laura Campbell. Uh, it should be a very uh, educational presentation. It's virtual. It's tomorrow night, 7 p.m., uh, and you can access it through the website. On Saturday, Oceanside Dock and Oceanside Safe are doing a prescription drug take-back day. The flyer is also up on the website, I believe. 12 to 2, Oceanside High School Circle. Contact us, Ralph Dock. Any over-the-counter or prescription medications. No sharps, no liquids. Anything else, please uh, feel free to come 12 to 2 on Saturday. Next Wednesday, the 28th, Oceanside Safe is having a fundraiser dining out at Chipotle from 4 to 9. The flyer is up on the, uh, the Oceanside Safe website and on the Facebook and social media pages. We appreciate the support uh, and dining out uh, at Chipotle. And lastly, May 12th, Parent University will be putting on a virtual presentation of the movie Like. Uh, the uh, flyer is already